What is going on YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to another video. So this video is going to be part one in a two part video series doing a full cooling system overhaul on my E36 M3 in preparation to get it out on the track for the first time. This video specifically will be going over all of the parts that I bought, everything that's gonna be going into the car, as well as taking everything out of the car that's currently in it in preparation for installing all of those parts. Taking everything apart is probably gonna take me the longest out of this whole job, just because a lot of this I haven't done yet on one of these, and I'm kind of winging it. So I want to kind of make this video as like a part one and then part two will be putting everything back in the car, bleeding the system, making sure the electric cooling fan works, make sure the whole car runs the way it's supposed to run. And then obviously we can get it out and beat on it after that. Also, while I have a bunch of parts out of the car, I do want to try to squeeze in a couple more videos. So just a heads up for anyone interested, if you're watching this video or if you caught last week's video where I walked you guys through replacing the power steering components on you know, my E36 and for your E36. The next few videos are going to be me doing my cooling system overhaul as well as I wanna to try to make a video replacing my oil filter housing gasket and kind of walking you guys through that process. While I have the intake manifold off, it's gonna be a good time to do that. And I also wanna make a video going over how to wire up my electric cooling fan that I have. There's a way you can do it where it pretty much works like OEM. It'll come on when a certain temperature is reached, the coolant temp rather, and it should function with the stock wiring that's in the car. You shouldn't have to add a whole bunch of other wiring, but I wanna make a video doing that, the oil filter housing gasket, the two cooling videos, and after that, the car should be running pretty good and I can focus on other aspects of the car and get it ready for the track. So enough talking. I'm gonna to get to draining the radiator, draining the coolant out of the car, and then start taking things apart. And I will update you guys as I get to, you know, some milestones as far as parts coming out of the car and such. Here we go. As you guys just saw, I took off pretty much everything on the front right here. I took off the auxiliary fan or the clutch fan rather from here. I used a special tool designed to kind of hold the bolts in place so you can loosen the, um, the main nut. Just a word of caution when you're going to unscrew it, you'll break it loose towards the driver's side, not towards the passenger side. Now that that, or once that was out of the way, you can take the fan shroud out, which is pretty much just held in with these two clips that clip to the radiator on each side. There's one like over here and one that's over here right on top. And then you're gonna have to undo some of the hoses that you know route along the top and through the bottom to the coolant reservoir. Once you have those undone, you can take the fan shroud out of the car and then the radiator, uh, once you undo the radiator clips, if you still have them, the radiator literally just sits on the frame rail down there. You can kind of see a better example right there. But yeah, now that everything's out of the way, obviously I have a ton of room now. I have really good access to the thermostat housing, the water pump, the belts. Um, I do believe I'm gonna have to take the alternator out to start getting the oil filter housing out. Uh, I'm gonna start taking the intake plenum off but uh, anyways, I'm gonna continue taking stuff off and I will update you guys as I get a little farther along. All right, it's been a while since I have updated you guys. Clearly I have a ton more parts out of the car than the last clip. I don't know if I mentioned it in this video so far, but I am kind of trying to do a few videos at the same time. So I am in the middle of also filming the oil filter housing gasket replacement video. Clearly I have it out. Um, similar to over here, this part of the engine. This part of the engine was absolutely caked with oil. The oil filter housing gasket 100% has failed. I will put in a clip right here of what it looked like before and then what it looked like after, which is how it looks right now as of filming it. As far as taking things out of the car goes, we are making really good progress. I am gonna take a little break and take the oil filter housing gasket to work, or rather the oil filter housing to work and clean it off, which doesn't have anything to do with this video, but as far as taking everything off and getting, you know, 
everything out that I'm planning on replacing. For this video, we are making good progress, so I will update you guys when I start taking the intake plenum off because I believe that is what I am doing next. Here we go. All right, it is the next day. Um, I ran out of light last night, but I did take some time to get the intake manifold off. I didn't film any of it, but I did get it off. I now have access to everything down here that I'm gonna be replacing. Now that I do have the intake manifold off and I could see everything down here, I realized that I didn't get every single hose like I thought as far as like the cooling system goes. I didn't get every hose for the heater valves. And there's one other hose that goes from, I wanna say the heater valve to the hard line underneath the intake manifold, but I have pretty much everything else. Yeah, so, you know, I gotta go through and kind of take out the last couple of hoses. Let me turn it around and show you what I'm talking about real quick. There are a couple hoses, like this, for example, I'm replacing, this I'm replacing. These are the hoses back there that I'm talking about that I didn't get uh, every single one. So all three of these will be staying in the car, but the one underneath that, if you see the one that runs across right here, I did get that one. And yeah, so, you know, not all of them are gonna get replaced, but these hoses still feel pretty fresh. They don't feel like they're falling apart. And surprisingly, now that I'm down here, there's absolutely no coolant leaking from any of these lines. So it's no wonder the car has ran as healthy as it has for me since I've owned it but I will be happy to have all of this stuff replaced, or at least, you know, the majority of this stuff replaced and know that it's recently done and, you know, healthy as far as I'm concerned. There's also two O-rings that kind of sit on this hard line in here. So I'm gonna have to unbolt the hard line and take it out and then replace these two O-rings back here. But yeah, that's what we got going on. Now I wanna show you guys the parts that I bought and then we will wrap this video up and I will start installing stuff for the next video. All right, so what you're looking at here are all of the parts that I decided to go with to get my car as ready for the track as I think I can. This is about 95% of all the cooling system parts that comes on an E36. I opted for a CSF aluminum high performance radiator. The radiator that came out of my car was in good condition. It wasn't leaking as far as I know, but it did have the plastic end tanks. And this radiator being all aluminum, should have one less failure point. Um, I also opted for a small electric cooling fan I gotta wire up. I bought a brand new fan shroud as mine was damaged. Obviously various little hoses and such. Here are the radiator hoses. That is the hose that goes from the hard line under the end tank, across the uh, fan shroud, and then to the bottom of your coolant reservoir. I bought a brand new OEM coolant reservoir. These are some of the uh, coolant lines that are under the intake as well. Um, I also bought a Stewart high performance water pump. This water pump is supposed to be better flowing and supposed to keep coolant temps a little lower than a regular water pump. I also bought a lower temp thermostat. The thermostat that came out of my car, this one right here is an 88 degree thermostat and this one is an 80 degree thermostat so it should open a little bit sooner with lower coolant temps. Along with that, I also bought this lower coolant temp sensor. This should kick the electric fan on sooner than the original one that came with the car. Here is the part number for that. Hopefully it focuses for you. Uh, also, just a word of caution, when you're looking for this coolant temp sensor, uh, when I was looking for it, it won't show up if you're buying this, let's say for like an S52 car or an S50 car, I believe that part specifically according to, you know, BMW is designed for, but if you look this up for like your S50 or S52 car, this one won't show up. It won't be the lower temp coolant temp sensor. So just be mindful when you're looking for it, you might have to grab it from another car, like, you know, put in a different model to find this, but uh, that one is, the lower temp coolant temp sensor, and then various other little clips and gaskets and such. I have the radiator clips right there, and then uh, a coolant reservoir cap. But yeah, this is everything that will be going in the car in the next video. So there you have it. That's everything that I wanted to get done in today's video. I wanted to get everything apart. I wanted to show you guys the parts that are going in the car, and I wanted the car to be pretty much ready to start having parts go back in the car. I spent a ton of time cleaning things. I have said it in this video already, but I'm kind of in the middle of a few different videos. So I got to finish talking about uh, the oil filter housing gasket video. I'm working on that as well. That's got to go back in. But as of right now, I could start pretty much putting parts back on the car and 
hopefully get this thing wrapped up. I've been here for a few days and I'm eager to get the car out and see how it drives with the lower coolant temps. So yeah, like I said, this is part one in a two part video series. So definitely subscribe if you wanna watch me put all of the parts back in my car, kind of walk you through that process as best as I can. And you know, also if you are interested in other how to's or DIYs and stuff, I did make a video going over my power steering system and I'm gonna make a video on wiring up this electric cooling fan. So if you wanna see any of that, definitely consider subscribing, turning on post notifications. Like this video if you enjoyed any of it. Um, leave a comment if there's anything you would have done differently or any advice for me getting this car out on the track. And if you made it this far, as usual, I appreciate you checking it out. Thank you and I will catch you in the next video. Peace. Yeah.